Watch CNN's Jake Tapper frown his way through an explanation of why Democrats are in for a beatdown in the midterms this November. Ouch. You- American voters head to the polls for the critical midterm elections. It is looking less and less likely that Democrats will be able to keep control of the House of Representatives, where Democrats currently <laughs> only hold a 12-seat majority. CNN senior data reporter Harry Anton joins us live. Harry, if you're a Republican running for re-election or trying to unseat a Democrat, things are looking pretty good, right? I would say they're looking very good from a historical context. So basically, I took the best Republican positions on the generic congressional ballot at this point in midterm cycles since 1938. That generic ballot basically is, uh, would you vote for the generic Republican or generic Democrat in your district? And guess what? Since 1938, the Republican two-point lead on the generic congressional ballot is the best position for Republicans at this point in any midterm cycle in over 80 years. It beats 2010 when Republicans were up a point. It beats 14, 2002, 1998, where Democrats led by a point. And in all of those four prior examples that make this list of the top five, look at that. Who won a majority? It was the Republicans who won a majority. Now, of course, The election is not being held tomorrow, and we'll see. Sometimes history isn't always prologue. But, but, my estimate for the 2023 House makeup, if the election were held today, which again, it isn't, we still have five months, five months from tomorrow, would be Republicans 236 seats to 241 seats, Democrats 194 to 199. That's based off of a formula of seat-to-seat race ratings from both the Cook Political Report and Inside Elections. That is a stomping, or that would be a stomping. Yes, it I guess. would. We'll, we'll see if it happens. A lot of the Democrats' problems, it, it seems, can be linked back to the president, right, who is severely underwater. Uh, Yeah, you know, midterm penalty, it's about uh, where the president is. And essentially, okay, look at the president's approval rating at this point since World War II in midterms in which his party gains or loses less than five House seats, which is essentially what Democrats need to maintain control. In 1962, the president's approval rating, JFK's, was 71 percent. Bill Clinton in 1998, it was 63%. In the 2002 cycle, 72% for George W. Bush. Joe Biden's is just 41%. Why is his approval rating so low? Well, I think this slide will give you the answer. This is the net approval rating on the economy at this point in a presidency. Joe Biden's minus 26 points. That is the lowest, tied for lowest for any president in the last 40 plus years. So speaking of the economy, just how big of a drag is this uh, economic situation shaping up to be for Democrats on the ballot this fall? I think it's the big drag. No. (laughs) Why is it the big drag? Because most important issue in your vote for Congress, what tops the list? Not surprisingly, with those gas prices as high and the inflation as high as it is, the economy at 48 percent, that beats gun violence at 17, abortion at 12, immigration, which Republicans had really wanted to run on, all the way down at 6 percent. And here, I think, is the big takeaway. Views on, your, on the economy are closer to, look at this, Republican Party 51%, Democratic Party 31%. Republicans lead on the issue that's most important. No wonder they have a st- historic advantage on the generic congressional ballot, Jake. 